So Thermal Right does kind of what Aya Neo does, which is release never ending waves of products. I can't keep up with it. This is one of the, you know, normally when we host these videos for trade shows, I like to be very put together, take a bunch of notes and go through it all methodically. With Thermal Right, I want to be honest with you all, I can't, I can't memorize it, okay? There's too much. So we're gonna do our best here. Uh, they have a ton of new coolers. So there's one called the Praetor 130. That's gonna be where we're focusing. It's some of these, there's variations of it. Uh, they also have some coolers attached uh, with screens now. So you can see one of these here, but the ones we're gonna focus on are actually behind me. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermal Grizzly's Aeronaut and Hydronaut Thermal Pastes. Aeronaut is Thermal Grizzly's entry-level thermal solution, marketed as resistant to curing and for long-term endurance. Hydronaut is Thermal Grizzly's next step up, targeted for overclocking and higher performance applications. We've used Hydronaut on a lot of our systems internally over the years. You can learn more at the link in the description below. All right, so we're gonna get to the air coolers here. Immediately, I was uh, already a little thrown off, but there's the Royal Praetor, which you can see here, this is the Royal Praetor 130. There is another one over here, which has Ultra appended to the end of the name. Uh, there's a couple other variations as well, but the differences as far as I can sort out is some of them have seven heat pipes, some are six, and then the fan uh, thickness varies as well. So for this one, the central fan is a 130 millimeter fan. It's 28 millimeters thick. Standard fan thickness is 25. This is a 25 mil front fan on the Ultra version of the SKU, uh, whereas this one has two 28 mil thick fans, uh, but it's still going for the 1130 and then 1120. These are gonna be $50. The biggest change is that they're going for soldering instead of press fit. So normally when you run heat pipes through the fin stack, the options of the manufacturer are to solder it all together. This can increase the rigidity and so the structure make it feel a little bit better. Some companies have told us that there's a thermal impact, not all of them. So Thermal Right says it's more about build quality, not about thermal. So uh, they're moving from press fit to soldering. Now, as we move to uh, testing data, so. Uh, Thermal Right says that they've tested at 300 watts for an Intel heat load and that between the Praetor 130, which is one of these, multiple of these, and the Peerless Assassin 120 that everybody knows, they're seeing about a four degree difference uh, at 300 watts with an Intel IHS uh, test. So that's a pretty big difference. Four degrees is a massive reduction and that's gonna probably mostly come from the fan thickness for the pressure and then from the 130. There's also a new PA140, so there's a Peerless Assassin 140 miller. It's supposed to have two fans coming with it. The unit here in front of me at the show only has one. It's gonna be $35, so they're going for the same price as the Peerless Assassin. It has a thicker fin stack than the Peerless Assassin, so this has widened on both of these towers, uh, which increases the surface area. And then it is 159 millimeters tall. So the height difference is gonna be one of the major elements it's why you don't see a ton of 140 millimeter coolers out there, just cause they bump into the side panels. Okay, let's move down this way. We're gonna go quick on some of these. So this one is called Royal Knight. This one is almost a Fuma style where you can see they've got the slimmer front fan and then the more standard fan thickness for the center. Uh, and it's also offset backwards away from the memory. So I guess the objective for this one is for maximum RAM clearance. We're going for the slimmer front fan, just like the Fuma, pushing it back. It clears up the space in the keep out zone for, this, for memory. Uh, so some downsides for offsetting back is you shorten that front fan, which is gonna reduce the pressure. And then also from what Scythe says at least, setting the, the heat pipes at an angle rather than going straight theoretically reduces the performance, but the net benefit is just clearance. Uh, so this one's also supposed to be $35, like the Peerless Assassin 120, and it has six heat pipes, uh, and that's pretty much all we have for that one. So let's go to the next couple. I'm gonna keep this one short too. So this is the Peerless Assassin 90 SE. The 90 comes from the fan size right here. Uh, this one is supposed to be $20. This is the, it will probably be the cheapest cooler that we will have tested uh, when we run it through, except for the Jones Bow CR7 and, and CR1200. So anyway, 20 bucks the target for that one. It is a four heat pipe solution. 
very stout and uh, and straightforward. Uh, they also have a couple others out here. So there's a Burst Assassin. I'm just going to run through them. There's too many. There's a Burst Assassin 120 Evo, six heat pipes, a push-pull configuration. So back fans got a pole. It's a reverse blade. That's supposed to be $25. They have the Burst Assassin 120 Vision. It has a screen, $50. And then they also have a liquid cooler called AIO Hypervision, 3.95 inch display, no pogo pins on that. They're going for the cable instead, which uh, Thermalright has told us is because it allows people to set the display up somewhere else if they wanted to pull it off of the pump block and then use it for something later. That's supposed to be $130. That's kind of the, the most expensive one we've looked at today. That's coming out in July. Uh, and ultimately, I mean, I guess the message here is, uh, oh, and there's one more thing. They're working on something that may compete with trikes, but we'll leave that there. That'll be for the future. And you can check out our video on them if you want to see the curved screen. So in addition to all this stuff, they also have some coolers with screens attached to the top of them. Like this one, there's a Warframe Pro Cooler. It's called Behind It Liquid Cooler. So some liquid and air we're talking about today. Uh, about, I don't know, a dozen or more <laughs> pump cap options that can go on to the various uh, liquid cooler solutions that Thermalright's working on. And then I'm going to just leave that there. Then over here, there is a wall of other stuff that we barely got to. Uh, I really just wanted to point out the color options for the fans, but they also have an LCP fan they're working on. First thing I noticed, so LCP is liquid crystal polymer. This is something that uh, Noxo has been talking about for the past year. Everyone's kind of getting into LCP fans, where specifically the reason you need it is for tolerances to get the blade as close to the inner wall of that frame as possible without clipping it. And so uh, LCP is the choice, but it's extremely expensive. So that's not only the downside. For this fan, they have a little bit of a larger gap between the fan housing. I immediately asked about that. I was told it was a deliberate choice for supporting higher RPMs. So uh, I'm not in a position right now in the trade show to, to validate that or not, but that was the answer for it. Um, and then over here is, is another uh, entire set of, <laughs> it's like another 40 square feet of liquid coolers. So ton of stuff for Thrill Right. We will be testing a lot of it, but not all of it because there's just too much. The thing I could most use from the audience is which ones? Mike over here will be <laughs> Running the tests, let's get a pan over to Mike. Uh, it's about 40 hours for him to test one cooler. So choose wisely because uh, just think of what you're doing to Mike if you make him test all of them. So <laughs> that's it for Thermal Rights Booth. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more. There's a ton more coverage coming from the show, and we'll see you all next time.